From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. And good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Andrea Lutz. New at noon, the State Board of Regents voted to challenge a new law that would allow guns on college campuses. The seven member board voted unanimously to have its staff file suit. The board says the law appears to violate the board's constitutional authority to operate the university system free from political interference. Board members didn't speak much about the issues of firearms on campus, but the Republican-led legislature passed the bill in February. Republican Governor Greg Gianforte quickly signed it into law. Former President Donald Trump's business organization is facing a criminal investigation in New York. The top prosecutor in the city looking into if his organization falsely reported values of properties to secure loans. The claim was brought to prosecutors' attention by Trump's former personal lawyer, Michael Cohen. Trump says both investigations are politically motivated. Democrats are pushing forward with a plan for bipartisan commission to look into that January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. But while the bill was created with bipartisan efforts, it doesn't have widespread Republican support. Skylar Henley has more details from Capitol Hill. The House is planning a vote today to create a 9-11 style commission to investigate the January 6th assault on the U.S. Capitol. It seems reasonable that America should have a bipartisan commission to ascertain the truth and present it uh, to the American people. The top Democrat and Republican on the House Homeland Security Commission negotiated the details of the 10-member commission, with Democrats agreeing to Republican demands for an even split between Democrat and Republican appointees, as well as both sides having subpoena power. But Republican leaders are urging their members to oppose the plan. There are a lot of other things that should be on the table that our members have discussed, uh, and even that, uh, that Representative Katko himself a push to get in these negotiations. Some Republicans want to expand the commission to look at other political violence and demonstrations, including last summer's racial justice protests. The eventual creation of the January 6th commission remains in doubt, with Republicans in the Senate signaling they are opposed to the plan. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell told reporters Tuesday he's pushing the pause button on the legislation. I'm not saying that we have decided this should not go forward. But if it's going to go forward, <clears throat> it needs to be clearly balanced and not tilted one way or the other so we have an objective evaluation. But Majority Leader Chuck Schumer Both says he body. will bring the bill up for a vote on the Senate floor. Republicans can let their constituents know, are they on the side of truth? Or do they want to cover up for the insurrectionists and for Donald Trump? Former President Trump urged Republicans to oppose the commission, calling it a Democratic trap. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Republican Senator Mitt Romney says he supports the creation of a commission, but Democrats would need 10 Republicans to join them in supporting the commission to overcome procedural filibusters and allow a final vote. And the Lolo National Forest hopes to launch a major safety plan for the next 20 years. The project outlines steps to manage fire risk on more than 177,000 acres of public land surrounding Missoula, Lolo, and other communities up the Clark Fork River to Clinton. The concept is to use thinning, prescribed burns, and vegetation management to reduce those fire hazards. And we are heading now into the weather with Miller Robson. Hey there. Well, we've enjoyed some beautiful weather. Have. Now those changes we've been talking about, here they are. Good afternoon, everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at those temperatures first. Off to our west in western Montana, we're looking at temperatures in the 40s and 50s. 60s uh, central Montana over to the east and also northern parts of Wyoming. You can see a lot of rainfall on the western side of the state, even some snow. On that note, we do have a winter storm warning that will kick in later this evening for the northern and southern Rocky Mountain fronts. And we got winter weather advisories all up and down the western section of the state where we could see uh, up to 10 inches, maybe up to 16 inches in some spots. So we've got that going on western Montana possibly severe weather on eastern Montana uh, side of eastern Montana. There's a lot of stuff weather wise going on and I'll try to break it all down with the main forecast coming up. Andrea. All right, Miller, thanks so much. Millions of Americans lost their job during the COVID-19 pandemic, but now employers across the entire country 
are scrambling to find workers throughout different industries. MTN's Gabby Crevett has an inside look at how this problem is impacting Gallatin County. Hiring signs are everywhere in Bozeman and across the Gallatin County and beyond. So what does that mean for the Gallatin Valley's local economy? Adam Paccioni owns Red Tractor Pizza in Bozeman. He says he and his staff are tired because they're understaffed and resumes aren't coming in. A lot of us haven't, you know, aren't getting days off right now. Um, and we're all working, you know, 10, 12 hour days on top of that. Vincent Smith with Montana State University's Initiative for Regulation and Applied Economic Analysis says this is an issue that's happening across the country. We've extended unemployment benefits for folks who lost their jobs during the pandemic and we've increased the size of those benefits. That has tended to make uh, it more difficult for industries where typically workers have earned relatively modest wages, nine, 10, $12 an hour, to attract those workers back to the, to the job. And now you're seeing fast food restaurants in Bozeman offering higher starting wages like $17 per hour. But Smith says some of our local businesses just can't swing those higher wages. So a basic law of economics must run its course. What is likely to happen is that prices of goods sold by the small service industry companies that are particularly struggling, the prices they charge consumers are likely to have to go up. But Smith adds the tight labor market within Gallatin County has deeper layers. He says the unemployment rate in the valley is roughly 3%, which is about the same as it was in January of 2020, before the pandemic. Bringing people into Bozeman who have relatively low incomes or the capacity only to earn relatively low incomes right now is very hard because of housing costs. Smith predicts here in Gallatin County, so long as housing costs continue to soar, this demand for service industry workers could persist. As for Pacioni at Red Tractor Pizza, he's optimistic people will eventually get back to work. And in the meantime, he's grateful for his hardworking staff. I have a good team. There, we, there's not many of us at the moment, but we all work really hard. These guys have my back. They have the restaurants back. Um, so we're just going to continue to crank out pizzas. Reporting in Bozeman, Gabby Crevett, MTN News. Thanks, Gabby. We do have more ahead on the new news on this Wednesday, including this. We're taking you to the shores of Flathead Lake, where there is much discussion and even some controversy over a possible adventure park. We'll have more on the discussion. But first, Miller's back in with your statewide weather forecast. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Miller Robson. So with the rain and the snow out west, a chance for severe weather off to our east tomorrow. What's causing all this? Well, that bad boy right there as that cold front that has swept through the area off into the Dakotas right now. Now, not all of us feeling the effects a big cool down yet. It's still kind of mild central parts of Montana and off to the east. But of course, we got the cooler temperatures off to our west. And you can see the rain and the snow kicking up, especially up in the higher elevations. Now about that severe weather, check this out as we go into tomorrow. Watch happen. Well, we'll follow that low. Where's he going? Yeah, right there into the southeast corner of the state, northeast corner of Wyoming. That's where that threat is going to be for that severe weather. If you're in the green shaded area, we're talking about uh, Lame Deer, Miles City, uh, Baker, up even into Glendive. What you're looking at is the possibility of some gusty winds, 40 to 60 miles an hour possible, and a small hail. But if you're in the slight risk, that yellow shaded area brought us down to the southeast up into the northeast corner of Wyoming, also over into South Dakota there. What that is, that's gusty winds over 60 miles an hour. So that could definitely bring down some power lines, some tree limbs, so we could see some power outages and we could see quarter size hail. Time frame right now, 2 p.m. until 8 p.m. tomorrow. But don't set that in stone. That timeline could definitely shift. That's just something we're going to have to to keep an eye on when we see the latest models come in. But today, 50s today in Kalispell in Missoula, 30s tonight. We do have a chance of rain for the rest of the week and some snow. On that note, a winter weather advisory kicks in later tonight through tomorrow morning uh, in Missoula and the Bitterroot Valleys. We could see up to two inches of accumulation. That's going to be wet snow, so little to no accumulation expected really on the roads, maybe um, impacting the roads, but wet. Heavy 
heavy snow could do some tree damage. So just FYI on that winter weather advisory tonight through Friday morning for Great Falls in Helena. We'll see one to four inches in the lower elevations, five to 10 inches in the mountains, up to 16 inches near Rogers Pass is possible. And that chance of precipitation pretty much stays with us for the rest of the week. Bozeman, a chance for mainly rain for the rest of the week in Bozeman and Butte, but we could see some snow, especially in Butte, where there is a winter weather advisory in effect all the way through Friday morning, up to two inches in lower elevations, up to 10 inches in the mountainous regions. Glendive, we're looking pretty good today in Glendive, uh, but we do have a chance for those storms tomorrow. Remember, we have that marginal risk in Glendive. You're looking again at gusty winds, maybe 40, to 60 miles an hour. I think maybe kind of somewhere in between there and you can see the small hail and then you're going to cool down just a bit as we head into the weekend and in Billings, we do have a chance of seeing some isolated showers as we go along this evening, maybe a rumble of thunder. We're not looking at any severe weather tomorrow, but you can see we do have a chance to see maybe some strong thunderstorms. Gusty winds probably going to be the biggest concern and we are cooling down by Friday, getting into the 40s and then temperatures starting to rebound as we get into the weekend and Sunday may be the day where we see the heaviest rainfall. So again, if you live in those areas where we do have that threat of severe weather tomorrow, 2 p.m. till 8 p.m. is kind of the timeline that could shift to or fro. So keep checking back uh, over across social media uh, for the latest uh, updates. Again, the biggest concern is going to be those gusty winds 40 to 60 miles an hour. And if you're in that shaded yellow area, we could see some uh, quarter size hail. But uh, keep checking back for the latest updates on that possible severe weather tomorrow afternoon.